Hey yo, what it do family? Welcome back to another video of Millionaire Monday. It's your boy Sam I am at Master of the Man. Today I'm with my brother. You already know man, it's Ralph underscore underscore hat, y'all. Double y'all on social media platforms. Yes, sir. Hat me out on YouTube. Y'all know where to find me, man. Love. Hey. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm the best that ever did it out of me. I'm the best that ever did it out of me. I'm the best that ever did it out of me. Hey, man, y'all know this is a new platform for us, man. We're really just trying to connect with people. Uh, just give y'all another source of like conversation, perspectives on what it means to be motivated and just be encouraged a little bit. So today I got a little something for you. Um, okay. We've kind of talked about this a little bit, you know, between living life and a life worth living. Um, yes, sir. But I'm going to put a little spin on it. So oh, spin. the statement comes from George Bernard Shaw. And it says, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Mm. And I think, I'm gonna say that one more time for y'all. Mm. George Bernard Shaw, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Now, I would consider both of us to be creatives. Right, um, right, and, and And things that we do and our passions and our projects that we create, uh, even this platform right here, um, but I think when people are leveling up, when they're becoming the best version of themselves, when they're going to that next height of who they want to be, there's something called imposter syndrome that kind of sneaks in, where you kind of feel like, you know, is this really me? Am I being fraudulent? Am I being authentic? You kind of start to question the truth in who you are because it doesn't reflect who you used to be, right? So when I say life isn't about finding yourself, life is about creating yourself, tell me what that kind of makes you think about upon first hearing it as far as creating the life that you want to live. Man, yeah, that, that joint's a good, that's a good one too. That's like, it makes me think pretty, pretty deep on that too. Uh, I feel like me creating myself, like what you just said, doesn't make me feel like fraudulent. Me creating myself is like me trying to put the best version of myself out there. Not changing who I am, mm -hmm. but maybe changing the things that I do that okay. make me. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like me to the core, like the core thing I feel like to find out is is who is Raphael? Gotcha. Like, like who am I? I'm a very kind, caring, uh, creative person. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I for who Raphael is, he puts a lot of people typically before himself. Gotcha. Then that that's I feel like who I am. Um I mean, there's more things too. Like, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sure. sure. I feel yeah. like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like there's for the sake of time, for the sake of time, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, what I'm saying? there's a lot of things that make up a person, but yeah. I feel like for the core, if you ask probably most people that know me or that are close to me, they would probably allude, allude to those things that you know he's a good dude. He looks out for people. Like he does a lot of things for other people. That's me now. Creating who I am was basically me creating. Like, Raphael's a driven, he's a driven individual. He's an right. entrepreneur. He's a go-getter. He's a very, he's a very sociable person. Gotcha. Um, he knows how to get out here and with the creative mind and create visions for people. Like, that's me creating me. Like, people know me. Now, what people see at first is like that. The designer. Yeah. Like he's yeah. a creative. That's yeah. that's that's me creating the the, the, the image, image yeah. of who I am. That's yeah. where people see me. It's like, bro, he is a photographer. Yeah. A videographer. Yeah. But then now when you look at like, okay, who is he as a person? I'm the same person I am when he was five like, ten years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. to the same day. Like I I don't ever waver from who the person I am. I'm the same person every day. Okay. Okay. So when people look at me, it's like I had a friend that I met 
on that clubhouse bed until the first time I dream deal. Yeah. First time physically in person. And they were like, bro, you are the same person. Yeah. You are on the app in person. I was like, nice. that's just me to the core. I don't change yeah. for anybody. Like, I'm not, I'm not, that's what I feel like when people be like, you, that person's fraudulent. You change your you're whole inner core you, yeah, of yourself. Yeah. You're the mean, you're not the same true individual that yeah, you don't have to say your values. Yeah, more right. values. Exactly. So I feel like that's the key uh, purpose that we should do. You got to stay true to who you are as an individual, but create the narrative. I feel like that's why I always say control your narrative. It's like you create the narrative of what nah, that's, you are and what people see you. No, nah, I think that's like so important, like what you just said, to create the narrative, right? So when we're talking about creating yourself, creating the person that you want to be. One thing that kind of worked for me is I took a 24 hour span and a lot of us, I think we can do this on the weekend, right? We can take a Saturday, we can take a Sunday. Take that 24 hour span and do, if you could live your ideal day, create your ideal day, right? right? I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna have this for breakfast. I'm gonna wear this type of outfit. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna maybe walk, go for a walk here. And and I started doing that probably about last year. No, I really, I really started doing that during quarantine, right? Because there was nothing else I really could do. Yeah, you couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, right? I forced everybody to, to reflect and so, be to themselves. So the one thing that I really could do was go out for a walk, um, mm -hmm. go for a run or something like that, right? So. I put that into my ideal day, right? So I would say, you know, wake up, I'm gonna have pancakes. Pancakes are my. I have to eat pancakes <laughs> every day, dog. Like, you know, what's, for real? What's pancake that's, my, that's my ideal breakfast, bro. Pancakes, yeah, that's my ideal. Um, but I think when you start creating your ideal day, it allows you to visualize your ideal life, right? And putting together a series of ideal days will create the ideal reality in your life. Because you'll look up and you'll say, dang, I've had seven days of living just like I wanted to. So I recently left a job of mine. And I went on vacation and I lived like a vlogger. Like I had my camera every day. I walked everywhere, like I, I, I talked to the camera. Um, and what that did was that set me up for, hey, this is what life will be like when you're completely reliant on being a blogger, when you're completely reliant on, you know, creating content for people to view. And it allowed me to put my entire self into it because I said, this is my ideal situation. This isn't okay. just something that I feel like I shouldn't be doing. This is something that I feel to my core is it. going to keep me who I am right. and allow me to portray the person that I want to be portrayed. And I think when people are, like I said, that imposter syndrome kind of creeps in is when you start to taint a little bit of those morals and values, right? Um, so you realize you're not as compassionate. You realize maybe you're a little bit greedy now or you're a little bit selfish. Um, so, so how do you think people, like it, explain a time where maybe you've dealt with, you know, kind of feeling like maybe I'm not the person who I should be or I want to be. And like, what do you think somebody can do to kind of get out of that if you got one? Ooh, man. Um, I'm asking an interview question. Name me a time where right. the cash <laughs> register came up short. And <laughs> Ooh, man. Um, geez, bro. Um, it's crazy. It's probably a real story I got here. And I really probably ain't told many people that. And um, it made me question if I was doing what I thought I was supposed, supposed to, be. to be doing. And that was in grad school. I felt like at one time, and this is because, let me iterate, like for people that don't know how design school works, it's very, it's, it's opinion based. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our work is critiqued and reviewed by our professor, and it's how they view in the work. The the role. Role. Yeah, and then, or, and then also by sometimes other, they have panels, like it's a jury. Yeah. So then, 
that's how a lot of our design work is reviewed and critiqued. So it was one point like I came in, I started style my fat, and then yeah. boom, I'm popping. I mean, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah this, got this, this, yeah. this is it for me. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm doing what I've always seen myself yeah, doing. Yeah, living the then dream. Yeah, you hit the, I hit that moment where it really made me question whether I was doing what I was like, well, like, damn, I'm not really, yeah. am I any good at this? Like, yeah. I hit a spot where I ran into one of those tough teacher situations yeah. that it was just like, bro, it, it, it definitely made me doubt sometimes of like me, it almost made me doubt like who I was. No, like, yeah. am I really, am I really uh, any good at like this? Or like, uh, maybe it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And, I almost, and, that, and that's a time where I had to like really, I, I had to sit there with myself because I kind of got in the low spot. I'm like, damn, I, I didn't get really the yeah. grade I wanted. Like, boy. Yeah, yeah. I ain't made for this. I ain't built for this. Bro, right. Because yeah. in grad school, it's so fickle. Bro, people don't like, you have to hit a GPA of like, you can't go less than a 3 2. Gotcha. In grad school. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're basically making all A's and B's. You really didn't stay in. Yeah. So then I hit that part and it's like, man, like my biggest class, I think I had got like a C. I yeah, think. So I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm thinking I'm doing good stuff, but uh, it's just not resonating with, uh, you know, like I said, it's being reviewed because it wasn't resonating. And I had to really sit there with myself and one point I was like, bro, I don't know, man. I'm like, this is where I thought things like, man, maybe I'm not built for this. I might have to drop out of this thing. And then I started looking and it's like, shit, but a lot of people like family. I got like yeah. people looking up to me, like people looking like thinking positive, like bro, I can do this. So then, that's like that other thing that I found like we talked about. That was that motivation piece that came in like yeah. bro, I sat there or flat out was in the Bible. I was like I was reading off to myself, bro. I had no distractions on. And then that got me that kick. And then as soon as I came back into that next semester, bro, I just went I went crazy, yeah. bro. And then from that point on, I was like, yeah. bro, I was refocused. I was like, bro, all my all my stuff was hit. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Everything I put out was just like a fire. I think. Fire. And it just that just was like that just reassured me like bro you gonna hit those moments in life where like I said you gotta control the narrative. It's like I could have easily just folded and gave, gave up, up everything up. and yeah. got off and then let something steer me off of what my real purpose was. Yeah. And I stayed true to being in my purpose because I knew in the core of me that was who I was meant to that I meant to be. Yeah. That's, that's that's who I am. I think there's a key word that you said in there that's and that's doubt, right? I think doubting is a form of fear. And for me, it's like when I hear people say things like, you know, imposter or fraudulent or anything like that, it's just fear that right. the, the person that you're supposed to be or the person that you want to be won't be accepted. This right? Yeah. So yeah. If, if I go out every weekend and I'm the party guy, party front I get lit I turn yeah. up I take shots <laughs> the moment I decide I don't yeah. want to take shots or anything oh, anymore everybody think you off yeah now I'm now I'm not who I am whereas I'm still the same person I just don't do the same things right right and I think once we get past that and I, this is what I, I said in a previous episode like you have to have stronger feelings for the life that you want to live then you have about somebody else's opinions and feelings. Because at the end of the day, you're responsible for you. Now, you might have a family and stuff, and like you you might be kind of responsible for them, but the things that you do in a day, the, the life that you live, when people reflect on what they're going to write in your eulogy, what they're going to put on your tombstone, those things are based on what you do. You're the only one. You're not, they're not going to blame anybody else for what you did. They're going to be like, this person was grown, this person made their own decisions, and this is the life that they decided to live. So when you look back and you say, you know, dang, like, this is the life I have. Are you able to look back and say, you know what, I chose this life and be okay right. with it? Right. Or do you, are you going to look back and you say, you know what, I let people choose the life that I want to live for me. Or I was so afraid to go mm -hmm. after my dreams. Going after your dreams is scary as hell. Oh, bro, man. Going after doing something different is scary as hell. Like I'll be the first to admit. Like how? And this is why we are making these type of videos for y'all because it's 
just understand that you're not alone in, in wanting to be better. Yeah, like, not at all, not at all. Yeah, there are people around you and there are people that this is a connection. There are people connected to you. Maybe we're not physically, physically connected to you, but there's something that brought you to this video and there's a reason that we're connecting right now through this platform. And that is because we are like-minded. We are all in communion. We are a community of people who want to be better and we can be better. And let the fear go of, I won't be accepted because we are gonna accept you. Like, right, I, right. I, there's a thing that went around today. It said, I wanna see my bros win. Let's see how many reposts this get, right? And I see that shit everywhere. I was getting it in text messages. I was getting it in group right. chats. I was getting it in DMs because at the end of the day, I want to see people win. Yeah, right. And people know that. And that's why it kept coming back to me. You right. know what I mean? Like, that's the crazy that's, part. And that's the love, though, because it's like, this is why I say when you got a real, like, good group, like, group of friends or uh, supporters with you. Yeah. Bro, like, we look at somebody's win like it's our own. So, my boy's goal to get to 5,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube or 10K, he hit his five, bro. Hell, I feel like I hit five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if it's mine or not, you know what I'm saying? It's just that I've been, you know what I'm saying? I've seen my dude go on the journey and, and build that and, and be in there with them yeah. in the background, you know what I'm saying? He knew when I had zero. zero. Right, right. So, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? It's like seeing them get there. I feel great for what he's doing, bro. I'm proud of what my dude is doing on his journey and how he's making that, man. So it's like any win I see them have, I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like everybody's doing something in different ways. It's like, I mean, they, they, are, they are my push and support yeah. to get back into doing more of the content to bring to, uh, to people and bring pieces. Because... Like, you know me, I'm out here, all, I'm all over the place out here. All but we, we, we all are winning and yeah. doing things in different ways and making connections. And doing it our way. Yeah, and you're right. And doing it our, our, in all, the way we want to do it. And I think you realize, like, what you give is what you get, right? I think when you realize, like, damn, you know what? I'm really happy for people, like, to be doing this or be doing that. You, you like, if you ever get a chance to just stop and look at the amount of people that are happy that you're doing it, and you're doing whatever, like what you're getting, what you're getting in return is what you're actually giving. You know what I mean? I'm right. giving love. Right. I'm showing love. I'm 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 buying this person's clothes, or I'm supporting this person's book, or I'm supporting this person's dream. Right. I'm, I'm liking their post. I'm showing love, not to get it back, but because I'm genuinely happy for what they're doing. Right. And I know, and I'm not doing it so that this person can like my stuff. I'm doing it because I know there's people liking my shit that are genuinely happy for right. me. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna say, yo, I'm gonna like your shit, you gotta like my shit back. No, nah, I'm gonna like your stuff because I'm genuinely happy to see you doing what you're doing. And the people who like my stuff, the people who support me, are genuinely happy to see me doing what I'm doing. And that's just a cycle, bro. And it's just, right. it's just whatever you give is what you get. Like, if you give hate, you gonna get hate because people gonna see that you don't show no love. So you can't be mad when you don't get no love. Like it's simple as that. But yeah, That's man. A big fact. I think I think let that fraudulent thing go. You're not a fraud. It's okay to be better. It's okay to recreate yourself. I think a lot of people like recreate themselves during high school years and college years, uh, where they just you know I'm I don't like the person I am and I want to be somebody different. And it's that's true. okay. It's yeah. also growth. That's okay. Exactly. Growth. I like that. I like that. Yeah, because you know what I'm saying? Like, we, it's like, as we get older, we also mature. The, our, our mentality, our mindsets change, interests change. Our palates. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> like, things that motivate drive us change from when you are uh, a child. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right. that's. So I feel like a part of people changing is also a part of people growing and developing and experiencing. So we're like learning because we're experiencing life. Like That's we're right. getting like things we're more real. Like whereas kids, we don't deal with a lot of things as we do now as adults, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's a whole like shift and change. But like we said, the, the key thing is 
knowing like how you like the, the principles you raised on, like how you are as a genuine person, like you are a good person in the core. Yeah. Like you don't change like don't change the true thing. Sam. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Sam is the, Sam yeah. is the same true Sam. Yeah. I know he's been the whole time. But the Sam for what he was doing yeah, yeah, yeah. in I high guess, school yeah. is different from the Sam yeah, where he's, he's, he is now. I you was Hooper Sam then. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, look, now look, I'm look. lucky to hoop. Right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> You're not capping us no, all of a sudden. You no, be surprised. You look at half the, half the game, bro. Everybody was like, no. athletes playing ball, bro. You look at us now, it's like, well, I'm lucky to got they run a few uh, no, games now, dog. No, no, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's, it, it, it's no. like, it's, it's life changing. And those are decisions we made in life. Yeah. You know what I'm I, I tell people all the time, they be like, bro, you play? I was like, yeah, I'll be playing ball and stuff. But I realized, like, bro, I'm not going to the league. So, it was like, realistically, it's like, you make that decision, like, bro, this is a real growth decision. And that's a hard. And that's, I think, for a lot of ex athletes and people who play sports, like, that's a hard transition because right. when you play a sport, that's your life. Like, yeah. you thinking, you know, I'm going to the league, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to die on this field, and I'm willing to die on this court. You got out like, there. whatever. Like, I used to tell people, like, if I thought I was about to play basketball, that's a, that was the best life for me to ever go. Like, because right. I was doing something that I genuinely loved. Um, but I think that transition, of life after your sport or life after a major event, life right. after a death, life after college. That transition is 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 a is a, is a traumatizing time. I don't want to say traumatizing, but it's a hard time for a lot of people because you have a clean slate of hey, who am I gonna yeah. be? Going from something that you you yeah. known your whole time. Erase the unknown. Erase it. Put it in the white room. Yeah. You're going to, you're blank canvas. To yeah, you have a blank canvas of look, this is what I'm gonna do. From this day forward, I'm gonna be this type of person. I'm gonna be doing this type, I'm gonna be living this type of life. And use that to your advantage. I mean, use that to find your happiness. Use that to like I said, create the life that you want. Um, and don't be be unapologetic about it. Like because at the end of the day, it's your life. You're the only one responsible for it, and nobody can really tell you shit. So, yeah, man, that's you got the closing thing. Hey, man, like we said, bro, it's it's on everybody, y'all. Look, control your narrative. Facts. I mean, if, if something you don't like that's going on in your life or your lifestyle, change. I mean, it's like a book. You can just change it, bro. You writing pages to your own life. So ain't nobody writing your novel, your story. Facts. Like you have the ability to change and do whatever you want in your lifetime because at the end of the day, you are the one that has to live with the decisions that you made, yep. the lifestyle that you've created for don't, yourself. Don't go blaming anybody for right. the decisions you made. So, you know, when you get 60 years old, 80, 70 years old, whatever, you know what I'm saying, you're fortunate to live to, you look yep. back and you just reflect on life, you want to be like, bro, I had a, I had a fucking yeah. I did time. everything I wanted to do. I did what yeah. I wanted to do. You want to be there and be like, yeah. Bro, I have done nothing that I really wanted to do in life. And that's like, you know what I'm saying? Life is short, bro. So that's how I look at things. Like, it, we are so blessed and fortunate to have an opportunity if we are able to wake up the next day. So that's how I look at things. Major. So it's like, if I had the chance, I want to experience as much things I can experience while I'm here. Yeah. And do the things that I enjoy doing while I have the chance. I have a philosophy. So there's a show called 24, right? And then, I, I, I've honestly never watched the show. But I saw that I saw the title and I was like, you know, twenty four. I was like, oh, they must be like living day to day type shit, right? So I have a philosophy that I call a twenty four hour life. And in this life, you live, you, you, it's so intentional. It's about intentional living, right? You have twenty four hours, and sometimes you don't even have twenty four hours. So you got twenty four hours in a day. I wake up at eight. I just lost eight hours of that day, right? Right. So intentional life means. I'm going to say the things I want to say. I'm going to do the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love on the people I want to love on. I'm going to like give the things I want to give because I might not get tomorrow. Now, you know, it's not, it, it, it invites gratitude into your life because you're like, hey, like I was able to, you know, one, I'm grateful for the time that I, I'm about to embark on. And I'm grateful for the people that I'm about to, you know, interact with. Um, but two, it just invites intentional intentionality into your life right because now it's like all right every decision that i make it has to be intentional because i don't want to wake up with regrets 
So if you're looking, if you're looking over your life right now, if you're somebody watching this, listening to this, whatever the case may be, if you're looking over your life right now and you're unhappy with things, take the blame away from it. Like, don't blame your coach for cutting you from the team. Don't blame your girlfriend for leaving you, your boyfriend for cheating on you, whatever the case may be. Every decision, blame yourself. Like, you made decisions and take accountability for yourself and change that shit. Like, if, if you, you got tomorrow, don't reflect on what happened in the past and let it disrupt tomorrow. Tomorrow is a whole new day and you have the ability to change it. So write that shit down if you need to. Yep. Go write it on your mirror, go write it on a sticky note, something, but figure out who you want to be and tomorrow will start working towards that. And it's, just, it's that simple. It's hard, but it's that simple. And just be consistent, be disciplined, and keep mastering. That's why I always say it. Like, you gotta keep becoming the best version of yourself. You gotta keep trying. But we're gonna end this one right there. That was a good one. I appreciate y'all for watching. If you made it to this part of the video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we're gonna be dropping all types of these uh, just to kind of connect with uh, ourselves and just connect with you all about, you know, encouragement and motivation. Um, this is the Millionaire Monday segment. I might drop it on a Tuesday, don't judge me. Um, but <laughs> real shit, you know, right. was, this ain't Monday, you know. Right. So, um, everybody knows you can do that. Exactly, bro. Too, bro. Right. It's okay, like, I might drop it. It's just, it's just a nugget for you. Um, but it's your boy Sam, I am a master of the man, and I'm here with Ralph underscore underscore hat, man. I appreciate y'all, uh, allowing me to be here, man. Uh, and like I said, bro, if y'all want to check it out too, man, Hatley Hour YouTube, man, y'all come check us out, man. Yeah, we, out. we all work in the, we, 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 for, y'all can see us all the time, y'all yeah. can see us often, so, and y'all already know where to find me, man, at Master of the Man, uh, Master of the Man dot com, go check out the merch, but we appreciate y'all rocking with us, and until next time, keep mastering. On the night I was born, the rain was pouring, God was crying, lightning struck, power out, his sparks was flying.